Hello. It's Galaxy Con Day 2. This is Pointless Nostalgia. Let's go. and tons of video games all set up. Where else can you see like Monkey D. Luffy sitting down playing Mortal Kombat? And it looks like they got an area set up here to view. Take a look and see what they're doing. But look at this, these old CRT TVs. Look at this princess TV over here. Oh, it looks like some Super Smash Brothers. past. It's so cool with a uh, Nintendo Wii set up to it. Looks like the Disney Princess TV. If you've seen, I have in my basement the Disney Mickey Mouse TV. Sadly, I never picked up one of those when they were super cheap. Oh, there's a uh, photo area over here where you can get your picture taken with Pikachu. Look at that. That is super cool. Yeah, lots of fun. Smart. They've got like chicken wire over them, so you can see them from this side, but you can't grab them. Mega volt. That is very cool. Oh, Hamburglar. Rubble, rubble. over here wearing a very cool Hawaiian shirt there's Noel McNeil there in the big blue house hello I love that shirt he's wearing chickens have lots of parts <laughs> I think it's important we understand the chicken uh, the chicken's got a, a beak, it's got a waddle, it's got legs. Uh, Does that make a chin thing? Waddle? The waddle, yes. This is Why do they have that? Uh, it keeps them cool. So the waddle keeps the chicken cool. Really? Mm -hmm. How do they? 
It like moves around. Yeah, like it fans them. Like they move their head, the water goes. Whoo. If you actually, yeah, it's, and it helps. If you, if you ever get real close to a chicken, you can hear it. Like it goes, wow. That's why they call it that. I don't even know if this is real fast or if you're making it up. But I told you I can't read my notes, so I got to make stuff up. <laughs> uh, this is Chanticleer and the Fox. This is the oldest chicken story. This is the oldest published uh, fictional account of the life of a chicken. This is about a rooster. First of all, I think it's important to note, uh, I used to, I grew up thinking that there were chickens and roosters, but chickens encompasses roosters and hens, right? So a male chicken is a rooster, female chicken is a hen, okay. but they're all chickens. But chicken is their like... Chicken is the is whole group, it's like people, you know, and then you have the male, your female. Um, but there, this is Chanticleer and the fox, and this is a story about this uh, rooster and this fox wants to eat the rooster. You can see he's got his tongue hanging out because he didn't have a waddle. So what he does is his tongue, they, they, yeah, they, they have their tongue What's up? <laughs> That's right. And so he was trying to catch that rooster and the rooster outsmarts him. Now, there's a guest at the show who made a movie sort of based on this. Don Bluth's Rock-A-Doodle. Don Bluth is downstairs. You guys know this? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's pretty great. That's like Walt Disney being here. So Don why Bluth. is Don Bluth not here? He's here. No, but in this panel. Oh, in this panel? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here goes Don Bluth. <laughs> It'd be great if he's walking by. He's like, I don't know. Well, they just so they announced me. I better go in. <laughs> Comes up on the stage, trying to read the notes sideways. Again, my notes are completely sideways. You guys can see that. <laughs> Uh, it says here, Chanticleer is the inspiration for Rockadoodle. Anybody ever see this? I this is a good movie, right? Uh, I look over and I see her photo, like oh. licking the candy. Oh, okay. Of course, that's merchandise she's been working really hard on. So what I do, I run as hard as that's I what, can. Just, you're, you're talking in uh, kayfabe and we're not all understanding. So the merchandise you're talking about is is candy. Eggs that, candy that is not going to be consumed by park visitors, but candy that will be consumed on Easter morning when you, as the chicken making the Easter egg. Yes. Right, okay, just wanna make sure and we're all on the same page. Is, is Duh. Basically, it's the candy decoration that's on the float. But, you know, in character, that is what we're making. This is our merchandise. This is what our life living is. Right. So I see her licking it, and I scare her. Whoa. <laughs> and she flies in the air. <laughs> and, and you so don't have that on. I asked her cackling through the costume. <laughs> and since that day, I became her favorite. All right. I, I'm sure we have plenty of questions now. <laughs> what are the other three characters you said for WWE? That was oh, that were in that. It was uh, Sarah Logan and Malachi Black, and who else? Uh, it was just two of them, uh, or was, who was the third yeah, Raymond Rowe from uh, the, the Viking team. Rowe from the Viking oh, team. Oh, okay, so when they, the WWE tag team with the two Vikings, yes. that she would... Yes, and then, uh, what is her name in WWE? She, I think she's on NXT now, Courtney. I don't know her WWE name. Uh, I just know it's Courtney, so I don't know okay. if that's her real name or if that's her brother name. <laughs> cool. But it's a redhead, Courtney. She's a Scottish, I believe. I, uh, I'm always right. fascinated about the inside the costume stories. Okay. Like what, like what are some crazy things that have happened? Because I feel like everything that happens when you get in one of those costumes has to feel weird. Yeah. Um, well, there's a fan. I never really used a fan much. It just blew hot air on you. I right. Suppose. It just yeah. it circulates the, the yeah. hot air. And yeah. Um. There's times that I've had to uh, like take my arms out and have to readjust my harness. So so, so the arms just flop just, down. You know stop. what though? Like if you look in the costume, his body's so round anyway. His like, arms look like they have some support in them though. Yeah. Yeah. Like so like the arm just kind of looks like he's doing this. So a lot of times if I need to do something, I'll just take an arm out. <laughs> you see like Phil will grab an arm and I'll pull it out and I'll just like <laughs> adjust it real quick. Uh, Cause there's a harness inside. So let me stand up. 
So basically in the harness, uh, you put it around your waist and on your shoulders and you can adjust it to wherever you want. If you put too much weight here, mm -hmm. it's all on your shoulders. So you want to kind of even it out between your hips and your, your thing. So basically you have this harness that holds the whole body. And then I would also, I was the only one really that would be able to unzip myself. I can take the arms out, put my hand in there, ah, the unzip zipper, myself, zippers down and then the take it off before yeah. they even come and like, all right, we're ready to let you go. Do I go to the sleeve as she can do herself? <laughs> <laughs> and then I would carry him with one arm inside. Like, how are you carrying him like that? So like the whole chicken me like this. Like, Was he heavy? Uh, he has some weightage to him, but I feel like the trolls are heavier than he is. Did you, uh, did you ever sneeze inside the costume? Huh? Did you ever sneeze? Yes. That's worse when you, you well, it's actually worse when you sneeze uh, in a costume that's just a head yeah. and then your body's separate. Like yeah, so, so short Carlos, or you like could a, reach up to your face if yeah, you your head. Yeah, like I can, what I can do is, I mean, it sucks, but I can take like my shirt and go like yeah, this. Yeah, so you could Carlos. do that. But if you were Curious George, the head is separate yeah. from the, the body. Sucks. So when you sneeze in Curious George's head, what happens? <laughs> you just sneeze and you hope there's no loogies. <laughs> and it's just here. And it's just well, slowly. Well, no, usually, actually, when you sneeze, because it's like here's the here's the head or whatever, and then you sneeze, it usually it's here, and you but, have to look at it. But even just sneezing, like even just like sweat, if it's coming down like this, you can't reach up and do that. You no, know, like hey, get like, up. You know how many times I've had to do half a set blind because I have sweat in my eyes. <laughs> that. Yeah. Because you're just like, ah. And a lot of times you sweat, wear headbands to help that from oh, going into too. your eyes. I did headbands to keep my hair up too. So right. that blue hair, so that helps a lot. Yeah, and, and blue hair dye probably irritates your eyes, doesn't it? Eh, nah, not really. All right. By the way, you said you steered the other chicken like, uh, was that with like the prop or something like, how did you say? You did you use an actual oh. spear? I mean, like, no, like, she, I, so you were referring, you speared like a wrestling spear. Wrestling move. Yeah, so the like wrestling a move where you... You grab it for here. Stand up. I, I think it's important to, to, to explain this. Uh, no, stop. Don't encourage her. So basically, right. let's say uh, so I was going to carry him. Actually, I would say it's so probably more chicken, of a right? gore, more of a gore, yeah. like when you push him. But like, uh, I'm a chicken. You got my yeah. chicken arm. Well, you could also be a human and get speared. But basically, yeah. you come in, you grab them, and you're oh, flying in the air, oh, and they like bump. Tech. So it's that. Right. And you fall down. But I like that some people in the audience may have thought that you literally <laughs> stabbed her. Picked her up. Did you do that again? No, I like really sad. Stop. Stop Carlos, trying to get her to hurt me. If Carlos could, he would. I'm pretty sure I could have got away with murder, though, as Carlos. I'll, I would do like the most asinine stuff, and they'd be like, yep. You told See, that baby to suck it. That was exactly what you should have done. There's a giant Wookiee here. That is phenomenal. That is impressive. Got to be eight and a half feet tall. That is just something else. Look at that. Across from here, we've got one of the village people. Uh, what was he? Was he the cowboy, I guess? Yeah, he's, uh, he's the cowboy. And he's meeting a Wookiee right now. I always think, like, the village people, there was a lot of, a lot of mustache in the village people. That is something. Man. This is great. I love this. Look at, I mean, there's costumes everywhere. This is just the best. And Cotton Candy Randy is back there. Cotton Candy Randy, good mythical morning. Cotton Candy Randy. That's the, that's the best cosplay here. Thank you. I've never seen it, that's for sure. So that's sweet nothing in my ear, please. <laughs> yeah, this isn't getting weird, everybody. Last night I killed the devil in his sleep, and now I'm the new devil. <laughs> so he couldn't do the monorail. So what he did instead was he did this thing, and this was... Okay, this is a truck that rode on the rails of, of a train. So they, they made the truck tires so that they would fit on the rails of the train. So you would start it with a key, 
and it go vroom, 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 like a car. And then they would drive this thing around the theme park and people would ride in the back. And so this was just a truck pulling a bunch of train cars. Uh, didn't last very long, but that, that was it. That was the Viewliner and Walt like that. Um, here's a hidden treasure at Disneyland. This is still there. Uh, this is the Little Man of Disneyland. So this was a golden book that came out. And it's a, it's a great golden book. It's about this leprechaun that lives in the land in Anaheim where they're gonna build the Disney park. And this leprechaun, he's furious at Mickey Mouse for coming in. He's like, hey, I live here. This is my home, don't kick me out. And Mickey's like, I'm in a domain. And he's like, no, <laughs> not, not happening. So Mickey graciously agrees to let him keep his home inside the theme park and so if you go into Adventureland and Disneyland and you look you can find his house there to this day uh the little man of Disneyland you can uh you can find this little golden book it's a cute little story uh but yeah you can actually still see his house there he decorates for Christmas oh wow so he's got a little cool yeah, like Christmas See, that is so great. Yeah, it's it's well worth seeking out. You can find all the instructions. When you go there, just you know, look on your phone, you'll find out where it is. Or ask a cast member, they, they'll either tell you, or like most of them, the last few times I've been there, they'll, they'll go, I don't know, okay. Uh, I hate all you people. <laughs> I have a theory about Disney employees. My theory is that in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even 90s, the Disney employees were people that were born in Florida or Anaheim and they got a job there and they were very excited to have that job and it was a fun job. My theory is the people that work there today were born elsewhere, moved there just to get, just to work there because they wanna to go to the park for free and go to all the special events. And so they're annoyed at you for taking up space in their theme park. And they're annoyed that you don't know where that wreath is on, on the little man of Disneyland's door. They're like, ugh, you don't know where it is? Ugh, don't you know anything? <laughs> don't you know that he decorates for Christmas? <laughs> so this is my theory. This is my theory why you still get nice employees there, but I feel like the percentage of nice to, uh, I don't really care, I'm just getting a paycheck, is not as... It's, it's not in proportion as it should be, but still a good time. All right, the underwater arcade. Oh. Disneyland had an underwater arcade uh, sponsored by Atari. This was outside the Disneyland Hotel, which by the way, the Disneyland Hotel interestingly was not built by the Disney company. Walt didn't know how to build a hotel. So he got a guy named Jack Rather, who he was married to an actress named Bonita Granville. Um, and Bonita Granville was on like the Lone Ranger and Jack was like a TV producer. He produced the Lone Ranger, he produced Lassie um, and he was in the hospitality business. So he ran the Disneyland Hotel and it was years before the Disney company was able to purchase it, which meant that if you stayed at the Disneyland Hotel in the eighties, you would go in and you'd get like a magazine in your hotel room, say Disneyland Hotel and then a picture of Universal or SeaWorld right on the cover. <laughs> Here's what to do in the area, because they didn't care. They wanted money from everybody. Uh, but the underwater arcade was something else. You'd walk down the stairs and you'd be underwater, you know, in a building. You'd look out the windows and you could sit there and, you know, play, I don't know, you'd play Defender and play Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. So, so you <laughs> brought me some sealed ALF cards from Big Lots. Well, I got them at a, uh, but you didn't get them at Big Lots. You no. got them. You have them secondhand. But this I got them at secondhand. The, I know the fact that they survived. Big the Lots original to Big person. Lots price was ten cents. All right. Could you hold this for me? Hold this right here. This is a nice thing. All right. Try to get. It's the chair that's not me. All right. You always find those chairs, guys. Squeaky chairs. All right. Let's take a look. I wanted. I wanted to open one of these, but I don't want to. Don't want to not do it. I wonder if there's gum in here. Is there gum? No gum. No, one stick of bubble gum. Where's the gum? Where's the gum? Maybe they pulled the gum out so it wouldn't ruin so the car. So it didn't rot, didn't rot away in there? Or it just right. fell out. Yeah, let's see. We got the Bouya baseball card. So this was Alf's baseball thing. I'm a people alien. This is my sticker. I put this on my bicycle. What do you mean? <laughs> Willie is the fairest of them all. I like that. I like this. I actually had a poster of this when I was a kid of this uh, shot of Alf in the tuxedo. 
Here he is in the laundry basket. He slept in the laundry room. Like he was like, but he was like a real being from his planet. Like he had a house and you know, he had a job. He was hundreds of years old. The tanners stuck him in the laundry room. Well, it smells good and it's warm, right? Hi, honey, I'm home. Look, see? Ow. These are great. And you know, these have, life and time. these have probably only got up more in value now because <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is starting a TV channel and he's going to have an ALF show on there. I hope he does. Like all other Momacians, ALF attended college for 63 years. Um, I hope they do. They've talked about bringing it back a few times and they have not. But man, these are great. These are just awesome. Yeah, I, like I said, I couldn't I pass I appreciate them up. it very much. This is, thank you so much for being I'm going to keep this one sealed. But we've seen what they look like. That is, I'm gonna sneak them back you, in the envelope. You, you can lord it over Dana that you have a sealed pack of Alf cards. <laughs> this is great. Backstage, they're setting up for match game. We'll be doing match game where they match the stars. I'm here, Noel McNeil, there in the Big Blue House. Leva Bates, professional wrestler Dana Snyder will be here. Elgin, who if you watch uh, the FSCW videos, he does commentary with me. He'll be here as well. So it's gonna be a blast. <laughs> It's filling up. Got all the tech area here, which is pretty cool. And then this is also playing on a screen outside. Look at this. Look at the video wall up there. There's Nick setting everything up. And there's Dave. These guys are great. This is the greatest cosplay. Oh, that's it. And the water bottle. I, I should have worn the exact same thing. I really wish I did. Let me see. Let me see the hat. Lean down. I want to see what the. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. They have a because they cut those from the pattern. So there's like six different ones theoretically. Well done. It's, it's a solid cosplay. And I got to go back to wearing the Zubas. The Zubas. I got to wear these to more shows. They're the most comfortable pants on earth. Oh my god. Fantastic. Regular pants. It is the best. It's the best cosplay here. Ah, oh, that would have been excellent. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it's cool. What's the R number? What's the R2A3. R2A3. Look at that. Hello. Are you on a mission? I understand. All right, may the force be with you. Safe travels. He's ready to fight all of you. Dios Marte. Hey, listen, Raleigh. We're coming after your championship titles. We're coming up, two of us. He's going to summon his eagle powers, and we're going to drop the hammer on you. Oh, oh, oh. All right, Drunk on Disney is going to be right here in about 90 minutes in the special event room. But yeah, it'll be right here. Intimate event, limited tickets. We are sold out. So if you're in the area, you can watch us through the window, but you cannot come in. But we'll be back next year. We're checking people off, and as they come through, we give them a hearty welcome. Yeah. <laughs>
125 dollars more than I should have. And an empty plastic bag and a poster from last year. When I walked in, Lenny, Lenny just started shouting at me. He started screaming at me. Lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, he really stand out. loved the match game, loved everything else that we did. Right now, a box is going to pop up here and one over here, and you can choose either one. And I'm in both of them, of course. So you just need to choose, and I'll see you next time.